dollars and forty five cents. House chicken salad, Roma tomato, melted provolone. <laughs> That was stupid, I'm sorry. Oh. It's not a really good one. Okay. It's in the menu. It was the menu. It was a great sandwich. How's the beer? It's delicious. Uh, all right. So a lot of these are uh, short poems. I've been helping these to death for about the last couple years. I'm trying to pump out a book. And funny enough, the University of Hell Press may take this, and it's just the perfect place for it. <laughs> this is called Things. This is for my lovely neighbor. Things. Outside, my neighbor is picking up sticks in her front yard. She's going to mow for the third time this week. It's 11 a.m., and I'm masturbating for the fourth time today. <laughs> Strange how things can get out of control. <laughs> that was better than the probe. Yeah, that was a, yeah, the probe one. It's, uh, these are all short, and uh, bear with me. It's going to be kind of ridiculous here. Red-headed woodpeckers. Jimmy is obsessed with red-headed woodpeckers. Look, he says, there's one now. <laughs> but I wrote these longer, uh, longer stuff, more narrative stuff, so this was kind of my breakaway from doing this. So these are... Uh, it, it's like passing notes in death class is kind of what I'm going with here. And, uh, so these are all kind of supposed to be the size of like short notes you pass in class or something. Uh, obscene, you know, cock pictures and stuff like that. You doodled and passed to your friends. So. But I'm back on the narrative. That's what I'm writing right now. So now I'm reading these and I'm like, Jesus, come on. All right. Map. There's a place north of town that will only reveal itself after you've drunk six beers, and even then, you might not find it. <laughs> it's a true story. This is called Guidance. My father taught me words like fuck and Cocksucker. He was trying to prepare me for the future. <laughs> this is called Childhood. Tom had a pet crow as a kid that followed him around town. His wings were clipped but he could jump from tree to tree. When Tom played baseball, the crow would come to right field and cheer. Tom is now 47, working on an oil rig off the coast of Galveston. He misses that crow. Mrs. Johnson is excited about indoor plumbing. But not Mr. Johnson. He will have to find another excuse to leave the house. <laughs> He's tall and skinny and about to explode. I hear him say, that's enough self-abuse for one night. His mustache was doing all the talking. <laughs> Jesus, all right. Aunt Jemima on cocaine. 
I haven't had pancakes in years. <laughs> Genetics. It's happy hour and the bar is loud. There's a drunk who looks like my great uncle. It is my great uncle. <laughs> He's staring at the bartender who doesn't look older than 17. I'm staring at her too. <laughs> now you're not so sure. <laughs> Hung over. On the bathroom floor, the tile feels cool on my face, and for a brief moment, I remember you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Forget about that guy. Telepathic Brotherhood. My neighbor cannot decide whether to shut his front door or not. In my mind, I have shut it for him. <laughs> I've, been on, I've been on the farm too long, I think I can't. It's too much. El Dorado Blues. At the gas station, I look at her behind the bulletproof glass as she rings up my Budweiser tall boy. She resembles a burned out version of Jane Fonda. She tries to smile. My card has been declined. We both look at the card. Neither of us are sure what we're doing anymore. I was trying to signal you, Neil, to keep reading, because uh, my reading was going to be short and brief, so. This is called Jake. Down at the end of the bar, Jake waves, but he does it reluctantly and then smiles. Because what he's really doing is waving at me because no one here will, and he knows that. I send him back a fuck you wave, making sure he knows that I know this little drunken exchange of hand gestures is now complete. <laughs> I was just saying something about being a poet is kind of like being a liar, but that's that's really kind of not. I lie about all the things that I shouldn't really need to lie about, but then I uh, tell the horrible, awful truth that I probably shouldn't be talking about to them when I should have been lying. That's what I just realized here. <laughs> Opium. <laughs> Most days, I sit around watching cartoons on mute. It's funnier that way. <laughs> I got this poem about Sam Peckinpah, but I can never, it just sucks, and I want it to be so great. I can't, no, there's nothing, it's just, well, it's like whiff, like a sniff. <laughs> I can't do the sound, and then it's like, it looks like it's going to be a Sam Peckinpah kind of day, you know, and nobody gets it. See, it's a horrible <laughs> Jimmy misses the old man while drunk on scotch. You only get a handful of friends, he says, this many. He holds his hand up with all five fingers stretched out. Now I'm down to this many. He holds down a couple of fingers, but you can tell he's not quite sure how many are left. I miss him, he says. I want you to know that. A moment realized on the corner of Fifth and Douglas. Rarely do they cry with you? <laughs> this is called relationships. 
at the restaurant, I look out the window. Is that a Staples over there? Apparently, she says. How long has that been there? She sips her wine and continues with the menu. <laughs> I love my wife. <laughs> All right. Scoring coke for the first time at Old Dundee Bar and Grill. Sitting on top of the toilet stall, I reach out, I reach into my coat pocket and take it out. It's wrapped like a beautiful present on Christmas morning. I unfold it as if it were a delicate origami. <laughs> JV, you're gonna save me up here, right? Uh, sure. All right. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. okay? This is called Truth from a Drunk in a Dixon County Bar. The graveyard is filled with dead fathers. Yours is just one more. Uh, is it Cervantes? Is that, is that, did I say that correctly? This is called Easy Sancho. I've been driving through Iowa for several hours now, and I'm surrounded by giant windmills. I feel like I'm being fondled by Cervantes. <laughs> this is called Afterlife. This is deep. Amy, it's deep. <laughs> Someday, I'm going to end up just like this pizza in the oven. Dead and on fire. That's <laughs> so true. That's so true. My poor children. They've learned to eat burnt pizza. This is called places. And this, I think, was inspired by Mr. Richard Hugo, I think. I can't remember. Places. Do you remember the last good kiss you had? In Sudan, a little boy misses his arm. In Tucson, a man has lost his keys. What does it mean? What does it all mean? <laughs> Um, this is called Love. I love my mother, and I keep saying that every time I read this because I get overwhelmed with guilt afterwards, but here we go. Love. <laughs> it's Christmas, and she's spending my inheritance on crap. <laughs> I love her, but after she's dead, I will sell it all. <laughs> this, uh, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. How are we doing? I don't know. I don't know. One more? Seriously? Okay. Um, I'll end on this one. Are you going up? I can get the menu going again over there. I... God, that was so stupid. We cut that out. Of this is called. Uh, funny enough, this is probably my longest poem. Uh, this tub looks like a small coffin. Thoughts on Van Gogh's final painting. I stick my feet into the bathtub and place my beer on the windowsill. The water is leaking through the stopper, and although I struggle with the tiny lever to stop it, I cannot. Through the window, I see the sky go dark, and it reminds me of Van Gogh's final painting, 
the one with the blackbirds shitting themselves as they fly straight into death. And it's then, as I reach for my drink, that I notice all the dead bugs lying upside down, pretending to sleep. And I think, dear God, for plunging my balls straight down into the hot water. <laughs> Thank you, Rex, you're the man. <laughs>